TC right here on VOA1. One, two. Welcome to Learning English, a daily 30-minute program from the Voice of America. I'm Ashley Thompson. And I'm Dan Novak. This program is designed for English learners, so we speak a little slower and we use words and phrases especially written for people learning English. On today's program, you will hear stories from John Russell and Brian Lynn. Later, Katie Weaver and Dan Friedel have a special health and lifestyle report. Finally, we hear today's lesson of the day from John Russell. But first... Scientists in Berlin announced recently the first successful embryo transfer in a white rhinoceros. The transfer, which occurred in a southern white rhinoceros, offers hope for saving the northern white rhino from completely dying off. The white rhinoceros includes two different subspecies, the northern and the southern. The last male northern white rhino died in 2018. Only two female members of the subspecies remain. Neither of them can carry a baby. Southern white rhinos are more numerous. Researchers hope to use eggs and sperm from northern white rhinos to produce embryos that will be put into southern white rhino surrogate mothers. A surrogate is something that performs the duties of something else. To test the plan, scientists said they transferred the embryo of a southern white rhino into a surrogate southern white rhino mother at the Olpajeta Conservancy in Kenya on September 24th, 2023. However, the research team only learned of the pregnancy after the surrogate mother died of a bacterial infection in November 2023. The embryo was discovered during an examination of the body after death. Even with the death, researchers found reasons to be hopeful. The International Biorescue Team, a group backed by the German government, confirmed recently that the operation had produced a successful pregnancy of 70 days with a well-developed 6.4-centimeter-long male embryo. We achieved together something which was not believed to be possible, said Thomas Hildebrandt of the Leibniz Institute for Zoo and Wildlife Research. That is really a milestone to allow us to produce northern white rhino calves in the next two, two and a half years, Hildebrandt said. The northern white rhinoceros subspecies has only two known examples left in the world. The Ulpajeta Conservancy in Kenya says that Najin, a 34-year-old, and her 23-year-old offspring, Fatu, both cannot naturally reproduce. In 2018, the last male white rhino, Sudan, was 45 when he was euthanized because of age-related problems. He was Najin's father. Scientists stored his semen and that of four other dead rhinos. Some conservation groups have argued that it is probably too late to save the northern white rhino using the method known as in vitro fertilization. The species once lived in Chad, Sudan, Uganda, Congo, and Central African Republic, but human conflict has caused the creature to disappear. Critics say the efforts made to save the northern white rhino should instead go to save at-risk species that have a better chance to survive. About 20,000 southern white rhinos remain in Africa. 
that subspecies, and another species, the black rhino, are increasing in number after illegal hunting nearly caused their disappearance. I'm John Russell. New research provides evidence that attacks by Myanmar's military government have damaged religious centers in the country. Religious leaders and human rights workers say the reported attacks are part of a wider campaign to attack religious communities across the nation. A civil war broke out in Myanmar after the military seized power from the elected government of former leader Aung San Suu Kyi in February 2021. Human rights agencies and United Nations investigators say they have found evidence of Myanmar security forces targeting civilians. The evidence includes details about bomb attacks, mass executions, and detentions and the burning of private homes. One group, the Assistance Association for Political Prisoners, accuses security forces in Myanmar of killing at least 4,416 people since the 2021 military takeover. The Myanmar Witness Project completed the new report on the destruction of religious centers. The project is part of the Britain-based Center for Information Resilience. Myanmar Witness examined claims of five airstrikes that caused major damage to religious centers over several months in 2023. The attacks happened in Myanmar's western Chin state. Religious buildings are given special protection under international law. Another group, the Shin Human Rights Organization, reported that the military has destroyed at least 107 religious buildings in Chin State since 2021. Those included attacks against 67 churches and five Buddhist monasteries, the group said. A 2023 report by the International Commission of Jurists said 94 Buddhist religious centers and 87 Christian ones had been destroyed or damaged nationwide. The Myanmar Witness Group collects evidence including pictures, video, and witness accounts found on social media services. The group compares this evidence with satellite images or other methods to confirm human rights abuses. Matt Lawrence is director of Myanmar Witness. He said the main goal of the project is to give evidence of atrocities to international groups for further investigation. Many human rights activists have accused the military of aiming for religious buildings. Bombing churches is much more than just collateral damage, wrote Benedict Rogers. He is a former East Asia team leader for the human rights organization Christian Solidarity Worldwide. He wrote in an email to the Associated Press, Targeting them is part of a deliberate strategy. Rogers said the military government discriminates against non-Burmese ethnic minorities and non-Buddhist religious minorities. In 2017, the military carried out a counterinsurgency campaign in Rakhine State. The campaign drove almost 740,000 members of the Muslim 
Rohingya minority to flee to Bangladesh. The military government offered no immediate comment on the new report. But in the past, military leaders have repeatedly stated that security forces only attack permissible targets of war. I'm Brian Lynn. Britain's King Charles was treated recently for a medical condition called enlarged prostate. American Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin recently spent two weeks in a hospital for treatment following an operation for prostate cancer. The 70-year-old Austin did not share any news of his medical condition publicly at first. He also did not inform President Joe Biden of what the Defense Department described as a minimally invasive operation on Austin's prostate on December 22nd. On January 1st, the defense chief developed severe pain and was taken by ambulance to the hospital. He was placed in the intensive care department with an infection linked to the operation. Austin was released two weeks later. The delay in informing the president and the public led to widespread criticism. A spokesman for Austin said at the time, Discussions about prostate cancer screening, treatment, and support are often deeply personal and private ones. King Charles, however, announced on January 17th that he would undergo a corrective procedure for an enlarged prostate. His announcement came on the same day the 75-year-old king learned of his medical condition. On January 29th, he left London Clinic after spending the weekend there for treatment. It is unusual for members of the British royal family to share details about their health. However, King Charles decided to share his news publicly to encourage other men to have their prostates checked as called for by medical experts. The palace said the king sought treatment in common with thousands of men each year. The prostate is a small organ of the male reproductive system. It is about the size and shape of a walnut. It sits below the bladder, an organ that stores urine temporarily. The prostate helps make semen, the fluid that carries sperm cells required for human reproduction. The prostate surrounds part of the urethra, a tube that carries sperm from the testicles or urine out of the bladder through the penis. As a man gets older, the prostate tends to grow larger. Medical experts say it could grow from the size of a walnut to the size of an apricot by the age of 40, and then to the size of a lemon by age 60. The larger prostate then may press against the urethra and cause problems in passing urine. The U.S. National Institute of Health, NIH, says men in their 30s and 40s may begin to have problems with passing urine. The agency advises men to seek medical help if they experience any of the four conditions. They are passing urine more frequently day and night, having an urgent need to pass urine, 
having difficulty passing urine or passing urine very slowly, feeling pain or burning while passing urine. The NIH says the three most common prostate problems are prostatitis, or inflammation of the prostate, enlarged prostate, also known as BPH, or benign prostatic hyperplasia, and prostate cancer. Prostatitis is an inflammation of the prostate that may result from a bacterial infection. It affects at least half of all men at some time during their lives. In the U.S., this condition is most common among younger men. Most cases can be treated with antibiotics medicine. Sometimes, doctors also give drugs to control inflammation and pain. King Charles was treated for an enlarged prostate, or BPH. BPH stands for benign prostatic hyperplasia. Benign means not cancer, and hyperplasia means unusual cell growth. BPH is not linked to cancer and does not increase your risk of getting prostate cancer. Those with mild cases of enlarged prostate could simply limit drinking in the evening and use the restroom more often to empty their bladders. Some take drugs that help ease muscles that affect urine flow. People with moderate cases of enlarged prostate could take drugs that help reduce the size of the prostate. The drugs called 5-alpha reductase inhibitors help shrink the prostate, reduce blockage, and limit the need for invasive medical operations called surgeries. In more severe cases, surgery is needed when drug treatment does not work. The most common surgical treatment is to cut away extra prostate tissue using an instrument, radio wave, or laser. In rare cases, when the prostate is very large, doctors might consider a complete removal of the organ. The American Cancer Society says prostate cancer is the second most common cancer among men. Skin cancer is the most common. The group estimates that about one in eight American men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer during their lifetime. The number rises to 6 in 10 among those who are 65 or older. The risk is also higher among those with a family history of prostate cancer and among black Americans than men of other ethnicities. In 2024, the group estimates there will be 299,010 new cases of prostate cancer, with about 35,250 deaths from prostate cancer. Prostate cancer tends to grow slowly compared with most other cancers. Cell changes may begin many years before a tumor gets big enough to cause noticeable signs. In addition to difficulties with passing urine, other symptoms of prostate cancer include blood in the urine or semen, painful ejaculation, and constant pain in the back, hips, or pelvis area. There are several screening tests to look for signs of possible prostate cancer. They include urine tests, physical examinations, and prostate-specific antigen, or PSA, tests. If symptoms or tests suggest possible prostate cancer, a prostate biopsy is advised. Doctors remove several small tissues 
from the prostate and examine the material for cancer cells. Any treatment that might follow depends on how far the cancer has developed. Most men who have biopsies after prostate cancer screening exams do not have cancer. In the case of Defense Secretary Austin, doctors said on January 26th that his cancer was treated early and effectively, and no further treatments will be needed. I'm Dan Friedel. And I'm Katie Weaver. VOA Learning English has launched a new program for children. It is called Let's Learn English with Anna. The new course aims to teach children American English through asking and answering questions and experiencing fun situations. For more information, visit our website, learningenglish.voanews.com. In this next report, Faith Perlow tells us about recent research involving emperor penguins. We learn that scientists have discovered four groups of the creatures that were not known about before. Pay careful attention to the word colonies. We will talk more about it after the report. Scientists have found four groups of emperor penguins in Antarctica that they did not know about before. These groups, called colonies, were found with new satellite images. Emperor penguins are the world's largest penguins, seabirds that cannot fly but that swim. They are considered near-threatened. This means that the animals might have reduced numbers or live in fewer areas than before. The penguins raise their babies, called chicks, during the Antarctic winter, on areas of frozen sea ice. If the ice breaks up before the chicks grow up, many of the chicks might die. Recently released research says that some of the penguins are moving away from their old colonies. Peter Fretwell is a researcher at the British Antarctic Survey, a government organization. He said that conditions at one colony had become more dangerous since 2016. As a result, the colony near Holly Bay seems to have moved about 30 kilometers east. He said emperor penguins have taken it upon themselves to try to find more stable sea ice. Fretwell said that the four new colonies have likely existed for years, but scientists have just recently seen them. They are small colonies with less than a thousand pairs of penguins, Fretwell said. Scientists have identified 66 emperor penguin colonies and fewer than 300,000 breeding pairs. The four newly found colonies do not change population estimates for the birds very much. However, Fretwell said that the fact that one of the colonies moved helps scientists to understand where the birds are going. Daniel Zederbart is a penguin researcher at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution in the U.S. eastern state of Massachusetts. He was not involved in the study of the newly found penguins, but he said that it is unclear if the new groups broke away from the larger colonies. Zederbart said that the places where the penguins reproduce are changing, and that, as the world warms, more penguins will be on the move. I'm Faith Perlow. Before the report, we asked you to pay careful attention to the word colonies. Can you remember an example of when you heard it? 
Here is the first example of the term. These groups called colonies were found with new satellite images. Colonies is a plural noun. The singular form is colony. We spell colony like this: C O L O N Y. A colony is a group of plants or animals living or growing in one place. We make the noun colony plural by removing the letter y and replacing it with an i e s ending. That is how we arrive at the plural noun colonies. We spell it like this: c o l o. N I E S. A few words about pronunciation. Even though we spell colony with two O's, we pronounce each O a bit differently. Listen again to the singular form, colony. Note that the first letter O suggests this vowel sound, ah. Note that the second letter O, the one that appears toward the end of the word, suggests this vowel sound, a.、Uh. We call this the neutral vowel sound. We can do an exercise called a backwards build-up to develop our pronunciation of the entire word. Let's start with the final vowel sound in colony. Repeat after me. E, e, e. Now let's add the consonant sound. N. Repeat after me. N. E. N. E. N. E. We will now add the neutral vowel sound, a knee, a knee, a knee. Now let's add the l sound, la knee, la knee, la knee. It's time to work on the first vowel sound, ah. Alani. 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 We can now add the first sound and say the entire word slowly. Colony. 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 We can now say the whole word a little bit faster. Be sure that you place stress on the first part of the word. Colony. 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 If you want to work on the plural form colonies, you can do the same exercise. But start with the last consonant sound, z, as in z, ez, knees, a knees, la knees, all a knees, call a knees. To summarize, in today's lesson, you learned about a useful noun for talking about plant and animal populations. You also learned how you can improve your pronunciation of this word in order to sound more like a native speaker. And that's the lesson of the day. I'm John Russell. And that's our program for today. Join us again tomorrow to keep learning English through stories from around the world. I'm Ashley Thompson, and I'm Dan Novak. 